Listen, I get it. You want to play faster. You want to show off, impress your friends, but you really don't know where to start. It almost seems super random when guitar players just let it rip. It seems impossible to do, but you can do it, and I'm going to show you how. Let's talk through our three note per string scales. I heard about this approach from Shred King Frank Gambali. Instead of our traditional in position major scale, we're going to change our approach to be a little bit more guitar friendly. So we're going to keep an even number of notes per string so we can focus more on speed than remembering which note of the scale we're on. I actually don't think of these as part of a scale. I think of them entirely pattern based. So remember to stay relaxed the whole time. The faster you play, the more relaxed you have to be. Let's learn the main position we're going to work through. Now the key mental switch here is to think about the notes on each string as note one, note two, and note three, rather than the root, second, third, etc. Yes, you should know all of this stuff, but it's not going to help when the speed runs kick in. I'm not telling you not to know your scales. It's just all muscle memory at this point. Now, remember, these are some monster stretches. So if you can't make the reaches, don't worry about it too hard. Um, you can move it higher up on the neck where the frets are closer together, or you can try not to hold down the previous note and rotate your hand. So rather than trying to grab, you're kind of rotating up into the higher notes. So let's take a look at this scale. So we're going to start on string number six, fret number three, and this is going to give us a G major scale. So the first note is on the third fret. And then we're going to go to the fifth fret and then to the seventh fret. OK, so we've got. I like to use my middle and my pinky for those. You can find whatever works for you. Remember, again, if that stretch is too hard, just rotate through so you're only doing one fret at a time. On the next string, we're going to do the same fret. So it's fret 3, fret 5, and fret 7. So we've got. On the next string, on the fourth string, we're going to have the fourth fret, the fifth fret, and the seventh fret. And we're going to do the same thing on the third string. So again, 4, 5, then 7. So we've got. On the second string, we're going to do fret 5, so there's a little shift here, fret 7, and then fret 8. And we're going to do the same thing on the first string. So we have 5, 7, 8, 5, 7, 8. So we're going to put that all together. So we've got So that gives us our three note per string scales. The important thing with this scale is thinking about it as note one, note two, and note three. So on the sixth string, this is note one, note two, note three. Then you go to the next string. Note one, note two, note three. Note one, note two, note three. Note one, note two, note three. One, two, three. One, two, three. You need to think about it this way instead of the first, second, third, fourth, yada, yada, yada. Now that we've got our shape down, we're going to talk about our right hand. This scale is absolutely perfect for economy picking. So what is economy picking? If we are crossing the strings, we need to pick in the same direction as the string change. So if we're going from string six, nice. We're, if we're going from string six to string five, or from three to two, whatever, we're always going to be going in the same direction as the string. This is different from alternate picking, where we're always going down, up, down, up, down, up. Alternate picking has its place, but it can be limiting when our notes really start to fly. So with our three note per string scales, using economy picking, we're going to go down, up, down on every single string. So easy, right? We don't have to think about our right hand at all. It's always the same every single time. When we go backwards through the scale, we're going to do up, down, up. So it's the opposite way. So when we're moving from string one to two or four to five, we're always doing an up pick. Now let's go the other way. Remember, we're going up, down, up here. And again, the up's got to get you to the next string. Now 
now try to push the tempo on this each time you practice it until it goes really smooth all the way up and all the way back down. So you want something more like this. Now you're a shred master. Congrats, you did it. Wait, you're wanting to play faster? You nuts. Your guitar neck's gonna catch on fire. You're crazy. Well, since you asked so nicely, I'll show you a couple tricks to go faster. Likely, it's your pick that's slowing you down. It's tough to go lightning speed with this plastic thing in your hand. So we'll have to deal with it. Well, not deal with it, which means we're gonna have to play legato, which is gonna include hammer-ons and pull-offs. I like to think of this pattern again, one, two, three on each string. Even going down, you can still do one, two, three with hammer-ons. Let's try it. Nice work. Okay, let's do it one time as fast as you can. Right notes, wrong notes, whatever, just go for it. What's the worst that can happen? We can do the same exercise with pull-offs as well. Let's try it. I like to think of this one as a three, two, one pattern. This is a little bit trickier than the hammer-ons, but start slow, really work to get the shape down and you'll get the hang of it. Well, now that we got the hang of it, what's the next step? Now, we need to get comfortable with different patterns. One, two, three, three, two, one, two, one, three, three, one, two, yada, yada, yada. Then you can start to combine patterns. Let's do a tough one. We're gonna do one, two, three, one, three. So that's one. One, two, three, one, three. Then we can spice this up by moving the one and the three at the end to the next string. So this means one, two, three on the sixth string, then doing one and three on the fifth string. Then you can repeat that on the fifth and the fourth string, fourth and the third, and so on. So it'll sound like this. We can also look at string combinations. So going one, two, three on strings six, five, and four, then five, four, then three, four, three, two, and three, two, and one. Let's try this. We can do it a little faster too. So then we can combine these string combinations with our extended patterns. Then we can extend to the other seven three note per string scales. What about melodic minor, harmonic minor, harmonic major? Whoa, let's breathe for a minute here. This is a ton of info and you almost have endless possibilities here. I wanna break down what you need to do exactly. Step one. Get the basic scale shape down. That's the initial pattern we did at the beginning of this video. Step two, your brain has to switch of thinking of these as one, two, three per string. Step three, become comfortable with economy picking. That's our down, up, down, down, up, down. And legato playing, meaning hammer-ons and pull-offs. Step four, learn a few patterns. You can use the ones I showed you. You can make up your own too. That's awesome. Step five, unleash your inner shredder. Remember. It's better to have one pattern solid than kind of know a bunch of them. When the tempos start getting really spicy, it's all muscle memory. No time to think about it at all. So there's five steps to help you shred better. What are your favorite shred patterns? Comment below. I'd love to see what you've come up with. Hey, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching our channel. As you've probably noticed, we're huge guitar fans, just like you. 
Throughout my life, I've been incredibly fortunate to have had the opportunity and support to follow my dreams of becoming a professional guitarist, and I'm so grateful for everything music has given me. When I was just seven years old, my great uncle took me to a show that his guitar teacher's band was playing. I still remember the wicked guitar solos, the energy of the music, and the crowd. I just fell in love with the instrument, and I begged my parents to get me a guitar for my birthday. Later that year, they bought me my first guitar, paid for all of my lessons at the local music school, and even drove me to my first gigs before I had my driver's license. The guitar has been a part of my life ever since. Many of my closest friends today I met through band class at school, jam sessions, or gigs. And it sucks to say that not all kids get the same opportunity that I had. Here in Canada, where Guitario is based, school music programs are chronically underfunded to the point where there aren't enough instruments, or the instruments are too old or broken. And that's even if there's a program at all. This prevents children from experiencing the joys of music, potentially suppressing an undiscovered passion to pursue something that has changed many of our lives. Along with building self-confidence, music can be a great outlet and tool for expressing emotions, managing stress, dealing with anxiety, as well as connecting with others and giving a sense of belonging, things that the opportunistic may take for granted. And it's why I'm so excited to announce that Guitario is going to be partnering with Canada's music education charity, Music Counts. Through their Band Aid program, Music Counts invests in music education by providing grants and fundings for schools and community groups to create music programs for kids who need it. And I need your help. Until October 10th, when you donate to Music Counts through the links below, 100% of the money goes to charity. We don't keep a cent. And it gets even better, because Guitario is going to match every donation up to $50,000. Click the link in the description below to learn more and see what options are available. Every donation will get you free lessons from Guitario, plus some incredible bonuses. Thank you so much for your support. With peace and love from Guitario.